up, rotters, and welcome back to Blue Rot, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best and worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. Peeps, I can feel that crisp air coming in. I can hear the leaves crackle under my feet. I can see Sainsbury's are repurposing mini Christmas chocolate balls as mini chocolate pumpkins. Our time is just around the corner and I am getting very excited. It's Halloween, it's fall, it's autumn, and this year I have several reasons to be extra excited. So before we get into today's episode, Blood Theatre, I have a couple of announcements to make. Over the next few months, I'll be involved in two amazing horror screenings here in London. Firstly, as part of Evolution of Horror Presents, I'll be joining Mike Munzer and Becky Dark to form the Dream Warriors for our first ever live event. On the 18th of September, we'll be throwing a pyjama party and screening Amy Holden Jones's legendary slasher, The Slumber Party Massacre at the Genesis Cinema in London. And then after the screening, we'll be recording a live podcast episode discussing the movie with milk and cookies. Uh, Tickets have been on sale for a little while now and they are selling fast. So if you're in London or the surrounding area or not, if you're in Jamaica, come and join us. It's going to be incredible. Just go to evolutionofhorror.com forward slash Genesis or click on the link in the episode notes. Secondly, I am so honoured to announce that I have been asked to be a part of the BFI's blockbuster season in Dreams on Monsters. This season of horror films will not only be at the BFI in London, but at cinemas across the country and on the BFI player. So on Saturday the 19th of November, I will be teaming up with The Final Girls and Evolution of Horror in the podcast crossover for the ages. We will be screening a surprise horror movie at the BFI's NFT 2 in London and providing a live commentary. (laughs) It is going to be so much fun and so silly. And of course, the movie will be suitably discussable. Uh, More will be announced in due course and tickets for that will go on sale at bfi.org.uk on the 20th of September. So soon. So set a reminder and come and join us. Now then, on to the matter at hand. Blood Theatre from 1984. Wow. Yeah, when I uh, when I saw this trailer, just the trailer for this movie, I knew exactly who I had to call to discuss this with me. She is a listener favourite after her hilarious appearances on the Chopping Mall and Microwave Massacre episodes. And as always, she is on top form. Tori Allen. Tori Alemeta. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. This is like my favourite part of any of the seasons. <laughs> Season three. Can you believe it? Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's not like I've been renewed. I chose to do season But no, three. but you know, you've still got people here. Still got the listeners. Still got people yeah. signing up. That's all that matters, babe. This is true. And you are a big listener favourite, honestly. Oh, am we, I? I've had people quote you a few times. <laughs> and Or someone, I remember someone commented on something saying, or as Tori Ellen Martin would say, blah, blah, blah. And oh, I put, my picked, picking up some of your isms. Put me on a t-shirt. Yeah, should do. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Living the dream day. <laughs> that was it. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what someone said. I said it straight away. I didn't yeah. even know. I'm so Bingo. on brand. Tick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's the t-shirt. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Jamie. Um, how have you been? I mean, it's yeah. always risky asking anyone that this this sort of uh, in this generation. I yeah. Guess. I mean, nothing's great, is it? So no. you've just got to make the most of it. So I'm just having a hot queen summer. Yep. Just doing my bits, you know, putting myself mm. about the town. Good. And just shoving down all of the pain and yeah. hoping it'll stay there and I think that's all we can do yeah that sounds healthy how about you We're super super healthy no pretty I'm pretty much the same lots of lots of suppressing yeah <laughs> lots, yeah you know numb it somehow I'll deal with it later yeah when I'm older worry about it later might die before you have to deal with it you know yes Try. did you ever used to decomp uh decompartment decompartmentalize um 
you and older version of you, like, you're so different people that you won't have to worry about it now. Like, with GCSEs when I was younger, I'd be like, but that's going to be a different, that's a different me. That's teenage Stephen, so I don't have to worry about I GCSEs. I think that's quite right good. Now. I'd literally think of that as another person. So when I'm 50, that's 50-year-old Stephen, so I don't have to worry about his knees going or his back. But I mean, that's bad. true. Yeah. My, I had, I was told that in therapy, actually. So you were like ahead of the curve. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. Who that you? would be fifty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, listen, let's uh, let's get down to it because first time you're here on season one, we talked about chopping mall, which is sensational. I love uh, chopping mall. I mean, you have a chopping mall T-shirt on today. I do right now. Um, and I mean, one thing that could be said for that is it has a narrative. Uh, secondly, we <laughs> talked about microwave massacre, which there was that not was a moment. <sighs> really there's nothing redeemable about that one it was just it was just really awful yeah <laughs> i mean yeah funny though yeah in a not uh, in a not very funny in hindsight it's quite funny yeah sure. at the time i don't think people distressing. make films to be funny in hindsight though do they so it's a bit no. of a miss <laughs> so basically Eventually, an epic someone fail. will look back and think this thing is, is funny <laughs> laughing at it yeah no so that yeah. was the fail yeah, Res- retrospectively funny. And then somewhere in the middle, mm. we have this, I'd say, which is Blood Theatre from 1984. Now, this is a first time watch for both of us. I'm assuming you hadn't seen it before. Definitely not, no. <laughs> not how I spend my spend my time. <laughs> um, general thoughts before we actually get into it. <clears throat> oh, I, I mean, my general thoughts, series, I don't really know what the hell happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what the narrative was. We seem to mm-hmm. be following a few strands at one point and i was thinking how are yeah. we gonna like pack Tie this, this up because we've got like 15 minutes and i need to leave the house you know mm-hmm. um i don't know why it was made and i don't know what was happening and they are probably the worst actors i've ever seen in my life and i feel terrible saying that because as as an actor myself you don't want to judge other actors yeah. however but they're not so you're not oh right uh, are they actually not no, I- Oh, you... oh, no, they might want to be. They want to be. But they're not, are yeah, they? Yeah, no, they're ter- I mean, they're outrageous. My mum would have done way better. And she's just had two strokes. And she <laughs> actually would have done better. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I think my favourite... Wow. I think my favourite... What really sums this film up for me? Because it is listed as a horror comedy. Which is it? Which was a surprise on That's both. That's interesting. To me. Oh, no, there were some moments where they did try and be funny. Like, again, in hindsight, not that I found it funny, but I see that they were trying it. Yes, yes. Again, not not quite the intention, is it? As long as it's it's the effort that counts. I don't think so when it comes to comedy. I tried to be funny. I tried Um, to be funny. So I think my favourite... review of this from e-film critic is a guy called scott weinberg and it's just a couple of lines and he said (laughs) rare is the film that fails so resoundingly in two separate genres at the exact same time (laughs) what a put that on a t-shirt isn't it what a quote (laughs) that's basically what i should have said when you asked me but i didn't know it was a horror comedy to be fair (laughs) <laughs> shockingly somehow I didn't know it was either um, <laughs> alright have you got a little so try and uh, put it together for us have you got a little synopsis okay not 25 pages this time you'd be pleased, mm-hmm. pleased to know I did struggle with this but I just said concise scorned lover slash unnecessarily angry man inflicts rampage on failing movie theatre after his girlfriend cheats on him and continues to terrorise the theatre years later after dodgy chain spotlight take it over. Very good. Succinct, to the point, and actually kind of makes sense. Yeah. So thanks for that. You're welcome. So Rick Sloan, who wrote and directed this, right? So Wrote and directed it. That's often mm. problematic, isn't it? Well, yes. When you don't know what I you're doing. Out, well, this is the thing, right? So I found out he was only 21 and he was a film student. And I was like, huh. When I found oh. that out, part of me thought, oh, bless. Okay, he's only 21. He was out of his, out of his depth. But then I thought, well, if you're 21 mm. and you're making a film, that means you have an interest in film, which means you've at least seen, seen a, film. a film before in your <laughs> life. So actually, at the very least, you should know what plot and narrative drive is. Especially if you're studying it and exactly. he's studying it's it. It's worse. Yeah. 
Yeah. He didn't even, he said if there was a, he, I listened to the commentary and he was saying, if there's a scene without dialogue, I just forgot to record any sound because no one was talking. So that's why scenes are silent. There's no footsteps. There's no, when he gets beaten up, you don't oh. hear any, oh, ah, oh. it's just like a silent film. So yeah. <laughs> and and then that begs the question, if he's at film school, is it his fault or has he te- been taught to teach? Has he been teached like has you have? Been teached very, <laughs> <laughs> has he been teached very unwellly? <laughs> yes, like Stephen Webb. Yes, exactly. Um, that's a, yeah. I mean, should he be asking for a refund, or was he right. not listening because mm. he was I too mean, he... busy dreaming up blood theatre? <sighs> I mean, he um, no, uh, no one got paid, obviously, uh, and all the extras were uh, students from his film st- uh, school. But he did go on to make a few more films. Only one did which he? I really enjoy called um, Hobgoblins, which is a ripoff of Gremlins, and it's. Hobgoblins. Yeah, that's the one. It's dreadful, right. but brilliant. Um, right. Uh, so, yeah, with that in mind, let's talk through it a little bit. As you said, uh, there's this fate, right, this opening whole thing with this failing theatre. And he finds out his girlfriend's cheating on him. So, yeah. first of all, the play that is on. What's that? It's just a woman screaming. Like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, who would yeah. pay to watch that? Yeah, no wonder the place is going on. Do you know what I mean? You joking? can't be pissed. I'm surprised they had 18 people in 18? there. 18? Yes. I think that's quite many... good going. I've played to less than that in Fringe Theatre 100%. In you and I together, probably. Yes, yes. Four exactly. people on a hangover thinking, why did I get out of bed for this? <laughs> yes. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, so when he sets the, the fire... I enjoy the dialogue of there's loads of smoke around the boy and girl and uh, she goes, what's going on? I wrote this. And he says, something must be on fire. Because as the old saying goes, Tori, there's no smoke Smoke without without fire. fire. (laughs) That's what got me. What's going on? Mm. So calm. Well, if there's smoke everywhere, probably something that would imply you should leave, vacate Mm. the premises. Oh, it's a red flag. Something must be on fire. So chill. <laughs> but also, I mean, it was a very extreme stunt for this guy to pull. Like, all that happened was they were flirting a bit, and she, he said, You need to tell your boyfriend or something. And she's like, He still buys me expensive, <laughs> he still buys me dinners at expensive restaurants, which was her reason for staying with him. And then homeboy's like, Do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to burn this mother to the ground. <laughs> It's just quite an extreme, Reaction, even for yeah. a narcissist, or you know, it, it's it's mm-hmm. up there with extreme life decisions, life it choices. It really is. I agree. Because he then, it's not even that, is it? Because he he doesn't just punish them. Because no, he then everyone. goes and stabs the box office girl with a very bent knife. That's such obviously been a sat, bent knife. It's obviously been sat in the prop master's back pocket for a while. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't do anything with that. What no. on earth? It was like the way. It was basically wobbling in the wind. Yeah, but it was a real knife. That's the weird thing. And so he was stabbing a pillow when he was stabbing her that she was holding, which is super dangerous. He was stabbing an actual pillow onto her stomach. <laughs> with a real knife? Yeah, with a real knife. Yeah. A real bent knife as well. So yes, it could have re- just gone in and then really per- you know, yeah. pierced, gone round, yeah. taken a few Change direction. jugulars out. Wow. <laughs> a few of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but them. then we get the title card. And for some reason, there's a 20... 20- right, I, this is where we need to... I need you to help. So there's a $25,000 reward to anyone who reopens the theatre. Who, who is giving that (laughs) Giving that money. Who's, because that means someone already owns the theatre, right? Uh, The failing theatre, which is... Well, it's closed down because it burned down. Also, he set the fire, but there was no fire. It seems everybody died from inhaling the smoke, (laughs) but the fire didn't seem to actually do anything because the building's still intact. because it's not burnt down. (laughs) Right. Right. And you may notice that there is a lot, there's an excessive amount of smoke in every scene. Sometimes someone opens a locker, smoke comes out, (sighs) someone opens a door. And that's because he was hiring quite expensively. He was hiring a haze machine, a smoke machine. So he got his money's worth in every scene. Just put it everywhere. Oh, here's a locker. And also flash paper, apparently. It costs $1. You light it and it makes it look like an explosion if you put it near the camera. So there's a lot of that as well. So that's why everything you open, a puff of smoke comes out. You maybe oh. should have looked at the flames a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe yeah, thought of it, not set something not on the fire. Aftermath. 
Yeah. Uh, so, you mm. know, the manager's sort of secretary, the, the bitch lady, basically. I don't even know where to start with her. Right. I well, do have some comments about our legs, though. Why are we obsessed with their legs? Yeah, the, and they were actually her legs when he's just, like, literally fully following her walking down the corridor. Yeah, I so, mean, they're but, nice legs, but that's yeah. extreme. So this is Mary Warrenoff. Now, Why? you may remember her in Chopping Mall. In the very opening scene, there was a, a really weird middle-aged couple who yeah. managed to make a sort of racist comment about yeah. the robot. That was her. Oh, wow. It's come full circle to She's an icon. She it is. is. <laughs> this is a full circle moment. From <laughs> Chopping Mall to Blood Theatre. What? Because she was a big cult actress. Yeah, because her name was like at the top. I yeah. remember that. She was like yeah. top, top billing. Yeah. So yeah. is that why she basically doesn't have a part? Like yeah. he didn't, he just sort Cameo. of put her in it. Yeah, she said But she's yes, in it all like, the time, just... but she doesn't really do anything. No. She, just, she like, even has a line where papers. she's like, I don't work. <laughs> like she literally says that or someone says that and she's like, I know. Like... <laughs> So I was like, so what are you doing there? Cool. People are just bandying money around in this thing. £25,000 mm. reward. Oh, I'll pay my assistant to not do anything. Oh, like, like what is, what is, it's definitely not 2022 UK, isn't it? It's, no, Jesus. it's not very, it's not very financially savvy, anyone in this no. film, are they? I also like the employee uniform, which is a brown jacket, mm -hmm. but they're all different. Every single person, they've got different shades, different cuts, yeah. different fabrics. So clearly, the cast have been asked, can you source a, a brown, brown jacket. jacket for the uniform? But uniform, by definition, means identical or consistent. That it ain't. <laughs> the cheerleaders as well, they had a problem mm -hmm. with. Yes. Because one of them had her D on the front. And then there was the sort of thing and that someone turned and I saw someone else had a D on the back. But then in the <laughs> next shot, they well, all had blank like... backs. And then in another shot, they had the Ds on the front, two of the... So they were just putting that D anywhere. <laughs> well, it depends if you like the D in the front or the back. Do you know what I mean? Or... <laughs> it's all about where you want that D. And on Hot Queen Summer, we'll just put the D all over the, the, D. the place. We'll take the roaming D. D. <laughs> I'm here for the roaming D. Yeah. But the, they, they were switching. Yeah. Switching, I thought. There's no continuity on this bad boy, is there? Right. Oh, yeah. And, well, we've got the very strange two employees, Selena and Darcy, who work there. Uh, there are moments. These two. Mm. I mean, Selena, she's a one, isn't she now? <laughs> she is. She is. And it was her that was uh, constantly kind of coming up with the idea of why don't I get my breasts out apparently she's not actually being exploited and she's not being paid you'd think oh the, <laughs> the director's gone can you get your tits out please because it's a horror film she no apparently she was like how about I'm getting unchanged by the lockers and he's like all right you get unchanged by the lockers I'll make the lockers full of smoke cool we both do something we really love to do and then she I think she came up with the idea of going into the cinema and going hmm here's your punishment looking at my tits I mean That's that was weird that was a really weird thing to do. Yeah. And she kept them out for a really long time. And she that sure other woman was covering her boyfriend's eyes. for a <laughs> yeah. Even when they'd left the, the cinema and the naked girl wasn't even there, she, there was a shot of her still covering his eyes. I guess that's the comedy element. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. That's the comedy. Right Blocked. there. And, and Darcy <sighs> didn't even recognise her name. Didn't, didn't register it. Uh, she, what I did register was she was cleaning... The inside of the popcorn thing, which again, yes. why every time does she open it, does the popcorn fly at her face, but it never flies she at her screams. face any other time? Huh? Yeah. But she was cleaning the inside of the glass with disinfectant, spraying while it the while the popcorn's inside. in there. <laughs> oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. Dust, babes. Good. No. Sweet, salted or soapy? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, soapy, there it please. is. All three, basically, because you don't have a freaking yeah. option when Darce is about. I mean, she's like, there were so many people here, and there were like two people, like, can I have some popcorn? Yeah. She said the there same was a two queue. on rotation as well. Different yeah. wigs. <laughs> like, Not even different wigs character. sometimes. Oh, <laughs> bother. God. Should we talk yeah. about the, um, the door sound effect? All the time. All of the, the time. The and swoosh. then some points, even when there wasn't a door, the swoosh would go. I feel like it was just a scene change sound. Well, this is the thing. This is the annoying bit, the inconsistency. So at first, it was just the door. Yeah, it was so doors. the door. So the door didn't go, because it's like a Star Trek spaceship yeah. door. 
I noticed that. And I thought, oh, okay, is that meant to be a little funny thing? And then it started doing the sound effect every time the scene changed All of as the time. well. Yeah. So it's just this constant barrage of this. Shoosh, yeah. Shoosh. It was uh, offensive. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did notice s- that. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, you can't when, not. Uh, Selena in her uh, gold pants. This is a moment as well. A camel toe. But that's the thing. He goes, what do you call that? And I was going to say, you call that a camel toe, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they are hoiked. They were, I mean, they looked good by the camel toe. Yeah. But again, what relevance does that bear on anything? Mm, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. It was bizarre. I wrote notes on that, but I can't find them. I did write a lot of notes. Right. Got a whole Good. page, but yeah, I had a specific note about that, but I'll find it. I might just uh, pop up later yeah. with it unnecessarily. I can't, I can't remember why she gets into them anyway. But actually, those gold pants are in all three of his movies. <laughs> oh, so was that them. another like expect like expensive I purchase? Probably... Do you think so? He just whacks them out. Oh yeah, it was the the line. I found it. I want to see you in polyester tomorrow. He shouted at her when she was wearing the gold pants as she walked away. And I was thinking, as if those pants aren't, I definitely reckon right. those gold ones are highly flammable polyester. Yeah, they're not but LeMay. What a line. <laughs> I, that that was, rather than saying, I want you back in your uniform tomorrow, he said, I want to see you in polyester tomorrow. But this is, that's so confusing also. Why is he like, can you please wear cheap, cheap, cheapest fucking material? Also, if you go and open the other theatre, I'll give you a grand each. So hang on, where's your... Where's your money? Where, uh, where, where are you getting your money from? Yeah. I think the grand was split though. Oh, between the three of them? Yeah, I think there was a line about that. And then I'm also thinking if you're getting 25000 for saving that and then you're making these poor people <laughs> split a grand. Like again, <laughs> hmm. who's doing your maths? Who's your yes. accountant? Because you need to sack them. That's fair. That's fair. I think it's good. Oh, we did, mm, Okay, we're getting into... Getting into a certain territory now because so they're they're over at the new place and stuff and strange things start to occur like doors opening and closing, vacuums unplugging themselves. Uh, then two random cheerleaders rock up and out of nowhere this knife appears with a hand and kills one of them. And then mm. this old dude appears, right? And he mm. stabs the other one. Now, we've never actually been told, but are we to assume that this old guy is the young guy from the first scene who burnt it down, the owner, but it's years yeah. later. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm guessing. And at first I was like, is he a ghost? But why did they age the ghost? But that's the thing. That I have this question. What doesn't make sense to me? What's he been doing all of this time? <laughs> right, so, right, let's break this down. So the shit that is happening now is supernatural. Yes, things are moving on their own. Door slamming, typewriters typing independently. Mm. So is the old man a ghost? Did he burn... And it didn't die, die in, the, in fire. the fire himself. And now he haunts the premises. If that's the case, why has he aged in the afterlife? Surely he'd be preserved the way he went out. As he and was. If he's, as he was. And if he's not a ghost and he's just older, then why is everything moving on its own? What's the superna- Where's the supernatural coming from? Ugh. No, I'm, I'm asking. To I want to that. <laughs> That's the thing. But there is no explanation. In my synopsis, initially, I wrote, continues to haunt the theatre mm. and then crossed it out and put terrorise when <laughs> I realised, especially when they kind of sort of kill him at the end, but then he's not yeah. dead, is he? So oh. I I cannot answer your question is the answer to cool. your question. None of it makes sense. It's mm. mildly uncomfortable for everybody yeah. involved. Absolutely. Also... Why does nobody hear him coming? This is another thing with, this, with <laughs> yes. the super... All of a sudden, someone's just like, ha ha. And then they're like, ah, because there's a knife in their eyeball. In front and of them. Nobody's sort of like been aware of that. I feel like if a big, big man was coming towards me with a knife, I'd probably clock it slightly before it, I was about to have my nose sliced off. Yeah. And they just seemed to go, oh, oh. Never yeah. didn't see you, didn't hear you coming. So then again, I'm like, is that a ghost that just goes? But also, would the ghost need the knife? I mean, lots of questions. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but it seems that he's really there. Nobody clocks him mm-hmm. until he arrives uh, in their face, which is very convenient for him. And meanwhile, there's some supernatural stuff. Guanin. Just, uh, good. <laughs> 
<laughs> cool. You're right though, because he 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 pops up between them, and they haven't like spotted him in the peripheral, no. and then gone. Oh, he that weird. That's a man there, and he's getting closer and closer. It's and he just, has a big knife. Maybe they've got seriously bad eyesight. Maybe they're super short. All of I them. Don't know. Everyone. Every single person in it. It's interesting also when Selena has an angel and devil version of herself in I mean, lingerie that's a real on moment. her shoulders. And that's that's not a device we'd used before that point. That's the thing, right? It's an interesting choice to introduce that brand of surrealism into the movie at this point and then never again. Never again. It's like, like suddenly having one scene in the middle of Jaws where the shark can talk and then it doesn't happen again. Yeah, nobody discusses it ever again. No. And I swear it happens sort of like 40 minutes in. Like it's quite deep yeah. in yeah. to just do that. And it's not just a dream a, sequence. Yeah. It's not. It's no. just something that one time happened to Selena. <laughs> she then got her tits out. We don't need to discuss it again. Yeah. Cool. Peace. I have Weird. to say, though, when she does go and get her tits out, uh, the film Clown Whores of Clown Hollywood. Whores. That I swear the actresses who play Selena and Thingy, that's them, right? It's it's definitely Selena. I don't know about the other one. But, uh, yeah. I would ra- think I'd rather watch that. I would like to watch that. I've actually written... The one on. with all the whores, I'm dead. Yeah, it's amazing. Sex workers in clown makeup getting drunk and selling their bodies. Sign me up. Fantastic. Someone Dream. needs to make that. Well, no, it's a rip. This is the thing. So, the Oh, director, is that a film too? It's one of his short films. Every film that you see like a poster for, like uh, Night of the Loving Dead and all these stupid things like clown whores of Hollywood. So they're short <laughs> films he made in in his class in... Uh, uh, right. film school and so then he's screening the short films in this which i think quite, is really cute quite idea. clever <clears throat> yeah if anyone wanted to watch any of them it's great yeah well no. in his head where he was going to be this you know massive cult hero mm. it would be like a real coup for people like all the super fans wouldn't it like oh that's clown horse oh that's but yes. i just don't think it ever amounted to that no. it feels like he's put in lots of easter eggs hoping that mm. in the future people would go, oh, yeah, that's from Blood Theatre from 1984. You know, mm. like, everyone knows it. And that's, oh, that's so his calling card. That is that is so Rick Sloan to do that, you know. Oh, bless Rick Sloan. Instead, they're just mouldy Easter eggs that nobody ever <laughs> found away. Easter eggs. Oh, bless him. Bless. God love him. Uh, Selena, though, but she's been completely dubbed. I don't know if you noticed that. There was some dubbing going on the whole time. You know, really early on in the film when the guy go the the like owner of Spotlight goes come over here to the to the cult actress. Yes. And then basically takes two pigeon steps away from his employees and then speaks at exactly the same volume <laughs> quite loudly so they'll definitely still hear. You know that bit. I was like that's that sounded so dubbed. It just it it didn't belong in that room. It was honestly like you and I now putting the film like streaming the film and then just going ha 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 hello <laughs> doing the voices over it for shits and gigs like right. that's that's what was happening and just i mean it was shockingly bad uh that's like something i love to do um <laughs> it's really stupid but um whenever adverts come on on the tv commercials i i try and if this sounds really weird but i try and say the voiceover i won't know the advert at exactly the same time as they're saying it. So if <laughs> if, if it's like new Garnier something, 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 I won't oh, know what it is. Oh, you try and match it. Yes, so I'll end up going, so get on Garnier, now. And it kind of, it's a bit like that, the dubbing. It's a bit like, all your hair, conditioner. <laughs> yeah. Me and my ex, ex, <laughs> had a few, used to do that. We used to put on, we must have been bored, but we'd put on like a film, put on the subtitles and then mute it and do all the voices. Yeah. They... And be like, oh, hello, come on in. Like you do, but it was hours of fun. And then sometimes, yeah, you'd take off the subtitles and we'd try and match their mouth, which could be more fun. Yeah, Quite that's a, good, really game. a good game. But we probably would have done better than whatever Rick Sloan <laughs> But it shocks me about all the silence and stuff because I, very early on, was like, blooming hell, they put a lot in ADR quite bad. You know, they've obviously dubbed this over. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, well, why didn't he dub some blooming sound or footsteps in in the other place? It's like he dubbed it when he maybe didn't need it and didn't dub it when he did. Yeah, there's quite a... Like when they first get to the other theatre, the three of them, they walk around in silence Silence. with that weird theme tune just going... 
<laughs> like with this really happy clown music. <laughs> oh, Rick. Um, I enjoy that Selena, after getting her tits out, she properly loses her mind. Like she's throwing everyone's popcorn. She's punching people. Everyone... She doesn't get fired though. No. <laughs> she's like, she goes maniac. She goes crazy. Like, and people aren't even that mean to her. They're, like there's a guy, like I think an older black man, and he's really quite calm. He's just sort of like, sit yes, down. Yes, excuse me, would you, know, you mind? Yeah, and she's like, Bang with your pop gun. Nah. I'm like, I would have probably gone a bit harder in on her by that point, or definitely got some help or called somebody. And also, when the when the boobs were out, everyone was quite calm. Like yes. people were like, "Oh, come on, sit down, stop." Excuse I'm me, like, a tits are out. That why is everyone acting it's like that's indecency. not a thing? <laughs> yeah. That's definitely illegal, isn't it? Just walking yeah. around with your tits out. Hundred percent. One hundy. One hundy. Uh, and it's very, it can get quite confusing because obviously the old theatre and the new theatre are the same building that they're just filming in and we keep jumping yeah. back and forth. Um, but we, we, we have, we find out it's the grand opening on Saturday of the new one. And we know this because one of the boys, Adrian, is on the phone and he says, our opening night is on Saturday. And then he just hangs up. <laughs> Doesn't say goodbye. <laughs> anything. Literally just get cuts that plot in there. Yeah. Oh, our opening night is Saturday. Bang. Mm. <laughs> rude. Okay. So he's rude. No customer so we, service. Thanks experience. for that exposition, though. Thank you so much for that for that plot point. Mm. Appreciated. Um, it's a shame they didn't tell anybody else that the opening was on Saturday. No. Wasn't it? Because it's just a lame film crew and not one other person, and then them in their sequin brown uniform yeah it's weird that you get that one reporter show up and she doesn't it's not even live she does like a pre-record and she's like right let's go up here and nobody's come like and not also she's one really person. sassy she's like it's probably gonna fail because it's failed before nothing ever works in this building I'm like excuse me we're, your, we're your job to be sort of impartial yes <laughs> that's that like the definition what channel do you work for like, <laughs> fox <laughs> That is dreadful. Yeah. Um, what about when Jennifer, the blonde one, wakes up in the popcorn machine and cooks to death, but then she wakes up again. And then so she wakes that's up annoying. again. It wasn't an actual moment. They obviously realised it would be a really cool visual, but wouldn't be able to explain how it came to be. Yeah, so it made no then sense. then just wake her up. It's that sort of, you know, tipping on the edge of Supernatural again, isn't it there? Yeah, right. Not quite sure what this is. But I kind of liked the look of that moment. Apparently, she literally couldn't breathe because, of course, they thought, let's also bump it full of smoke because we've still got that smoke machine for two more hours. <laughs> so apparently, she was really struggling to breathe. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, I mean, it's a choice. It was a choice. Mm. Mm. And then it's kind of this big ramp up because Selena and Darcy are at the the new one now and the plant falls and so they're like oh no one's too concerned about the plant falling like hey how did that happen <laughs> don't know <laughs> but it's I say it's ramping up but actually there's like 10 minutes left of the film and this entire film never escalates like it doesn't grow like the things no. don't get weirder the kills don't get more extreme. The, the the supernatural element just it's still things just kind of falling over or flying a little bit. Uh, and then yeah, randomly Mr. Murdoch gets beaten up and his brief gets That's gets weird. Taken. What's that got to do with anything? I I don't know. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all I've got Full to say. Stop. I think it's so that he doesn't make it there, but I don't know why that would matter if he got there. I don't know. Mm. It feels like they're like, oh, we haven't really given this anything, this this character anything to do, so let's just beat him up. They're just trying to get rid of everyone. I think Darcy gets dragged under the stage, and of course that's full of smoke as well. Obviously, just a smoke show. <laughs> um, yes. Also, I missed the reason that they're dressed like two five-year-old <laughs> at like an aerobics class. I don't when know. When did that happen and why? I was like, I could rewind, but do I care enough? Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know why Selena and Darcy had those outfits on. It was, I don't know either. And there wasn't. I, it, we don't know when it happened. No, it just they just were like, we work here now in a clown <laughs> costume. Like it, you know, it looked like they were going to roller disco. Yes, that's exactly what it was. What the, one of the boys? I don't know if it's Adrian or the other boy. I really didn't catch their names. No idea. When he's no in, this is another moment with the old man where you're like, mm, this could be avoided because he's in the projector room. Yes. And the old man is there, 
And he slowly Very makes, slow. walks up to him and he just stands there waiting until he gets to him. Like Very he doesn't slow. even react during no. the approach. A simple, uh, can I just help you? Just stares at him. Yeah. Just let Let's his him. impending death. And then I really enjoyed his acting where, I don't know, was he being electrocuted? electrocuted. And it just sort of <laughs> jiggled. Oh, oh. <laughs> but they didn't, couldn't even put like an, an effect on it. Like didn't do animated. Anything. Didn't no. do any like <laughs> noise. And then they decapitated him for good measure. No, that's the other guy. So oh, he's that another getting guy? electrocuted. And the other guy, I think that's Adrian. I keep calling them all Adrian. Oh, I didn't um, even notice it. I thought so it was the same guy. It looked like the hair was too dark. So it was obviously well, just a cheap head. Well, yeah, of course. So, yeah, so he's getting electrocuted. And Adrian's like, hmm, hmm, what's that strange sound coming from the projector room? So The sound we going, can't hear. Right. So instead of going through the door of the projector room, he climbs through the little hatch where the camera points to the cinema screen. And puts oh. his head through that. And it happens to be fitted with a guillotine. Of and course. so, unfortunately, I mean, he kind of asked for that right. himself. See, I must have been door? writing some notes at that moment and mm. I missed that. So then I just saw the dark hair and figured the other one had been decapitated because it's not mm. the right colour hair. No. And it's like a Barbie doll head, isn't it? You yeah. see when it comes off, the neck is hollow. <laughs> yeah. And it just rolls for a bit. It goes out. With some fake blood. <laughs> Oh God! I can't do it. Adrian died too. That was very good, Stephen. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah, Appreciate and that. then I think does Selena get killed by bright light? I've got a note about that too. Yeah, mm. it, apparently it just sort of um, said old man gets up, still on the rampage. Oh yeah, because that's the other thing. When it looked like the old guy was dead, I thought, okay, well he must be real. But then he just sort yes. of got up, and then I thought, well, he could be a ghost. Still don't know. And then but a ghost wouldn't have to fake being dead. You just disappear. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, or just or just carry on, not even pretend. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't and need to take a break. Actually, why? No. Yeah, why would he? Oh, why did God. he just? Mm. Whether he's a ghost or not. So yeah. then I've said, is oh at this point this is me desperately trying to like wrap this up and find <laughs> some sort of reason. And I've written is leg woman involved. That's that. The, the Mary stuff. Warrenough. She's mental, I've written. So I was thinking maybe she is like scorned and she, but no, that was just me going off on a tangent. And yes, then I've written, so is Selena, so has Selena been killed by light? <laughs> yeah. So I'm with you there. I think, yeah, they, she, a door opens, smoke, obviously, bright light on her. And she dies. And that kills her. And whilst that happens, the phone melts. <laughs> 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 For why? Like, why has she got a soap phone? What, what, Crazy. It crumbles. It just... And, of course, that was just uh, an effect they found. They, they obviously do. found that and they thought, oh, that's good. When could that happen? Or oh, maybe when she gets killed by the very bright light, we could crumble, melt the phone. But the phone in the other theatre that's In the completely other theatre, yeah. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. Uh, and then... Uh, I've actually written my next note is, is this guy a ghost or not? FFS. <laughs> Oh, I, I've written some cracking little moments. Uh, I, when I flick through them, some of them are amazing. Me just saying, uh, what? And what the fuck? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't know if it's I could say that. fucks. That's why I said FFS. Of course you can. Is this guy a ghost or not, for fuck's sake? I was getting quite annoyed by this point. <laughs> I've written a lot of more smoke. More smoke. Then the, right. So we've got the ending, right? And it's mm. the old man and he's in the aisle with uh uh, Jennifer, the main blonde girl, whatever her name is. Don't know any of their names. So he sits her down and hugs her. Well, because he thinks she's his ex. Fr- from 50 years ago? Yeah, because her, her outfit changes and she's dressed like the ex. Okay. So Hang he on. goes, oh, she's come <laughs> home to me. <laughs> right. And sits her down and cuddles her because he all he's wanted was, you know... To, to have his true love. So that's why he like slips for a moment because he thinks it's her. Because you get a flashback okay. to her. Yes, yes. It definitely is the same actress. And then, <laughs> um, and then he cuddles her and then that's where she sees her opportunity. Okay. So, and stabs him with no force whatsoever, but he dies So where does he think she's been? Because is he, is he under the... Is he under the opinion that he killed her and he burnt her to death? Or does he think she got away and she's waiting for him to come back? Or does he 
Is in he all, a ghost? In all fairness to him, he's mental. So well, that's fair. That's the one thing. By that Looking point, logic. like he's a sociopathic rampage killer person. So by that point, it probably doesn't matter because he. Uh-huh. This is the one thing I'll give old Sloan mm. that he can kind of get away with anything because this guy's obviously tapped. So. It doesn't really matter yeah. what he thinks. Because, yeah, there's a lot to question. Like, she hasn't aged. She's still alive when she's dead. <laughs> she's in the same uniform. That would be smelly. Mm. Like, you know, there's loads of ways we could we could go with this yeah. one. But ultimately, he's crazy. And he thinks <laughs> she's come home to him. Okay. Also ignoring that, she, what, she just waddle back into the arms of some serial killer who's, like, killed <laughs> <Waddle>. everyone. <laughs> Waddle. We love a waddle. <laughs> a waddle. It's so yeah. descriptive. Me waddling uh, down to get some ice cream. On a yeah, Friday that's night. that's a, a waddle is. That's I think a, waddle. a waddle's always a, like a a slightly guilty a guilty walk. Yeah. It's like a oop. I shouldn't be doing this. A guilty walk. It. I've just eaten four pizzas and now I'm right. waddling down to the shop to get some ice cream and some cookies. <laughs> yeah, it's that oop. One more. <laughs> oh, waddle, waddle, waddle. <laughs> But I just enjoyed it for her. She didn't really waddle at all, but I just quite like yeah. the imagery. So yeah, it's great. she's waddling on back to him after he's like killed absolutely everyone. I mean. But as you say, because she stabs him and he dies, not a ghost. Yeah. No. Yeah. Real. But that's okay. How, so Fine. why did nobody arrest it? So why when this thing <laughs> happened, right, at this theatre and everybody dies, whatever, and he's seemingly like, they don't find his body, hmm. wouldn't you be like, oh, maybe he did this. Oh, he set this whole building on fire, but it's not burned down. Rubbish if he was after an insurance <laughs> claim. Um, so what, like, but what, so he was just skipping around town, basically <laughs> still at the cinema, theatre, whatever it is, where he caused all of this ruckus Mm -hmm. and nobody ever like arrested him sectioned him Mm -hmm. any of it and more than that he's offering twenty five thousand pounds where did he get that from for new people to take it over so that he can kill them all and still the police aren't like do you know what (laughs) (laughs) do you know what do you know what I mean? right yeah there's some there's some the police finally do rock up don't they after after 50 years of shit 50 years they turn up and the, it's the oh, ending. Oh, yeah, so... They look like they're going to burst yeah. into that, don't they? You're right about that, though. The old man, like, where has he been hiding? Obviously, he doesn't have 25 grand. That's to lure people in. I really so, like the way you say lure. Li- I enjoyed the way I said that then because I didn't want to yeah. say lure. I didn't want to say lure. lure. Yeah, like lure. So pack. I really, yeah, I went for a lure. Lure. It's he quite lured, sexy. Him in, lured them in. Yeah. Yes. I like that. <laughs> the very um, end, though. So it's Warrenov packing up. She puts out. Uh, the poor the poor guy's just been beaten to a fucking pulp. Yeah, he's covered she, in bandages. She puts blames a him out like, in his hand. Yeah, and she, she acts like he's the biggest villain in this whole thing. And I'm like, ah. Oh. Um, meanwhile, the old guy, just for years and years, was killing everyone. And also, she knew about it because she was like, hey, hey, people right. always die in there. She did nothing. She just right. willingly sent old Titty McGee, Tits McGee, <laughs> Selena over there to get got. Yeah, it's very strange. And also, she's not, she's not very, um, there's no trauma from the fact that a phone just crumbled in her hand. No. Like she's not she's not she's go- screaming going, something fucking weird just happened, can't wait. No, she just has a fag. She's absolutely chilled. Yeah. Gives no shits, that woman. And of And all she's the not endings, there for a paycheck, so what is she? Well yes, what's her what's her MO? <laughs> I was gonna say she's just getting paid, but I'm like, Maybe oh, she's she the girlfriend fifty years later. Well, this is sort of when I said like is is the legs is legs o'clock involved? That's why I wondered because I thought, well, maybe this will, you know, connect and make sense somehow and make the there's some have some relevance. Right. No. 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 But the 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 actual very ending is the police opening the door mm. and it freezes. Freezes. And then it goes. It's all very happy. Yeah. Clown horse. Blood theater. Clown horse of Hollywood. And that's blood theater. Wow. So run out and buy that, everybody, and watch it. (laughs) 70 minutes of your life, you'll never get back. Oh, goodness. But I kind of loved it because it's just so... The audacity. The audacity. (laughs) The audacity to put that in front of The absolute audacity to expect anybody to accept that as anything other than a complete car crash. (laughs) 
But yeah, I mean, there's something brilliant about how bad it is. Like, even yeah. from the beginning when he's like, where's Ellen? Like, the delivery of how they do. And she's like, I don't know. Go and look. Like, I, it's like, <laughs> Holly Oaks wh- acting. what is this? Who's directing this? <laughs> Why? Even the O falling from the thing at the beginning, I was like, is this, sig-? you know, you're like looking for clues. Yeah. You're like, what's yeah. the significance? There aren't, there's none. No. There's save your time, pal. There's nothing makes any sense here. This Reckless is interesting. Abandoned. The um the whole opening of in the past and the fire and stuff. Mm. So that was actually tacked on and added after they'd filmed the film. And he was like, mm, I want an opening. So actually, what the original oh. film was is just an old man <laughs> <laughs> in a theater with white makeup on, stabbing people stabbing with people. no mo. So originally... So then the girl... F- yeah. So then the girl at the end... He just hugged He her. did just stab the girl that works there then. In I the end. It. So without that opening, maybe that's why you got confused. Because without that opening, <laughs> none of that makes any sense. So he, yeah, he just randomly cuddled a girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is what happened. He just fancied a cuddle. <laughs> OMG. Do you think yeah. the old actor had like died? So they were like, bloody hell, <laughs> you have to get a young and pretend it's him young just uh it's amazing that it was that was sort of added it was retrofitted yeah because to be honest that's without that it's completely batshit then what is it yeah like i can't believe 25 grand reward what's yeah like i can't believe i'm actually saying that that horrific opening was like good in any way but actually comparatively get rid of that and i like honestly that's what yeah like what, what what would it look like when they they find those reels and they're watching the stage shows they'd be like why is this What's what's this? this got to do with anything so is this cinema <laughs> and then it would show footage of them burning I, oh i suppose that was probably added after as well anyway do you know what let's i'm done i'm We're done. done i loved it i hated it all the above yeah all what you said yeah um have you got any final thoughts before we sign off it's a it's a d summer you just put that D, oh, D no. where you want it. D on the front, D in the back. Free D summer. Free yes. the D. <laughs> three D? <laughs> free the D. Oh, free. I thought you said three. I was like, wow. No, day. I mean, wave, nice work if you can get it. CD. But I was <laughs> saying got free. Free the D. <laughs> free the D. Yeah. Well, on that, I'm going to leave it there. Free the D. <laughs> <laughs> free the D. Love you. Love you too. Goodbye. Bye. There we have it. So stupid. Not not Tory, the film, obviously. Um, I loved that. I could honestly have Tory on every week. It brings me so much joy. Thank you so much, Tory, for bringing the smiles. Uh, next week, we have another listener favourite returning. Cody Jameson Strand will be here as we finally tackle Charles Band's ghoulies. Uh, if you're British, I don't mean we're tackling Charles Band's testicles, I mean the movie. Yes, Cody Jameson Strand from Critters fame. Uh, it's, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. That that laugh is back. Um, come and find me on the socials. On Twitter and Letterboxd, it's Stevie's Brain Rot. On Instagram and Facebook, it's Brain Rot Pod. Email me, steviesbrainrot at gmail.com, or come and find me on Patreon, where we're still rounding up our future frights with Matt Draper. Um, and that is patreon.com forward slash steviesbrainrot. Um, all right, then. See you next week with your ghoulies out. Toodles! Toodles!